I am Valerie Kenlock, the Renee and Richard Goldman Dean of the School of Education and professor at the University of Pittsburgh. And it is my honor to spend a few minutes with you talking about the theme equity and justice in education. And I will do so by making references to examples from our School of Education here at the University of Pittsburgh and from one of the professional organizations that I am a member of, the National Council of Teachers of English or NCTE. So to begin, let me first turn to feminist writer, activist, educator, and Black lesbian poet, Audrey Lord. She serves as a daily reminder to me to remember the importance of committing to transforming language into action, into humanizing productive engagements that can truly lead to equity, justice, and freedom for ourselves and for each other in this world. In fact, it is Audre Lorde who reminds me, and I quote, that we all hurt in so many different ways all the time, and the pain will either change or end. She writes about the transformation of language into action being an act of self-revelation. And she also talks about how this act of self-revelation is in fact fraught with danger, but is, it is an important process in order for us to heal and to live in a hopeful world. She writes, and I quote, each of us is here now because in one way or another, we share a commitment to language and to the power of language and to the reclaiming of that language which has been made to work against us. In the transformation of silence into language and action, it is vitally necessary for each one of us to establish or examine her function in that transformation and to recognize her role as vital within that transformation. There are so many passages from the articles, the books, the poetry that Audre Lorde writes. I'm gonna end by talking about this particular passage from Audre Lorde as well. And it states, quote, the fact that we are here and that I speak these words is an attempt to break that silence and bridge some of the differences between us. For it is not difference which immobilizes us, but silence. And there are so many silences to be broken, end of quote. Audre Lorde undoubtedly offers me a way forward, guided by hope, justice, love, and language. In fact, Audre Lorde provides insights into how we can engagingly understand the need to think deeply about the potential, promises, and purposes of equity and justice in education. And I'll tell you, here in the School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh, this comes through so clearly in our mission vision statement, and I want to read it to you. Our mission vision of the School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh is as follows. We ignite learning. We strive for well-being for all. We teach. We commit to student, family, and community success. We commit to educational equity. We advocate. We work for justice. We cultivate relationships. We forge engaged partnerships, we collaborate. We learn with and from communities. We innovate and agitate. We pursue and produce knowledge. We research. We disrupt and transform in equitable educational structures. We approach learning as intertwined with health, wellness, and human development. We address how national, social, global, and technological change impacts learning. We shape practice and policy. We teach with and for dignity. We think, we dream, we lead with integrity. We are the School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh. That mission vision statement that I just read to you guides the work that we do and the cultural values and drivers that we have as a school community. We commit to working with dignity and integrity at the center of everything that we do. We commit to ensuring that we're striving with others toward equitable education and justice for all. We have a culture of respect, transparency, and accountability here in the School of Education. That is connected to the work that we do with research and engage partnerships, with innovation, 
and being interdisciplinary by nature. We are the school of education. However, we have to take a moment to ask ourselves, what does all of this or any of it means? What does it mean to work for equity and justice in education? For one, I would say that it means that we commit to studying our history in relation to our presence and in relation to our hopeful, hopeful future with a goal of doing better. Hopeful, hopeful future with a goal of doing better. I needed to repeat that because that means that we cannot sit in silence and in action. It means that we cannot be complicit in shaping a future that mirrors devastation, harm, pain, suppression, violence, and other forms of injustice. It also means that even as we continue to experience the devastating impact of COVID-19, along with ongoing racial violence, that we are purposeful in determining ways to positively intervene as we truly commit to demonstrating how we can learn with and from communities, how we can collectively shape practice and policy, how we can commit to teaching and research and advocacy outreach and engagement that is not only equitable, but that leads to freedom for all. This is the work that we have to do. And as we do this work, yes, we must wrestle with the history of pain, trauma, and violence in this country and across the entire world. We also have to determine ways for us to do better, to be better, to think differently, and to sustain better for every single person in this world, particularly those folks who have been historically disenfranchised and who have, not has, who have not had access to higher education. We must do better collectively. This is the work that we are doing in our School of Education. This is the work that our Pitt Ed Justice Collective is doing, our Center for Urban Education, our Office of Child Development. This is the work that we do each and every day. This is also the work that we do when we talk about reimagining teacher and teacher education, we have been the recipients of a recent $2 million grant from the McElhatton Foundation to reimagine what this means for young people, for communities, for people who are thinking deeply about what it means to be a critical, engaged teacher in classrooms and community spaces. This is also the work that we are doing across the entire School of Education as we commit to focusing on healthy lifestyles and well-being for all. This is our work and it is guided by research, it is guided by teaching, and it is guided by our commitment to ensure that we are making available all opportunities for others to have access into so that we can learn with and from each other. This is the work that we are doing and it's the work that makes us currently the number one public school of education in the entire state of Pennsylvania. I also want to relate this to the work that I am doing with the National Council of Teachers of English. It's a professional organization with well over 25,000 members. And our members in NCTE are committed to thinking deeply about English language arts teaching, research, training, and leadership. It is the work that members of NCTE do inside of classrooms, in libraries, in communities, in homes, and in multiple other learning spaces and places. I could not be more excited to serve as the 2021 chair of the National Council of Teachers of English annual convention, which will be held in November. And the theme of this year's convention is equity, justice, and anti-racist teaching. With the support of our executive committee, our presidential team, and our executive director, Emily Kirkpatrick, NCTE is yet again one example of an organization leading the way for us to think critically about what it means to live in a world where justice is possible, where equity is always happening in our teaching, in our interactions with other people. And so where does that take us? Where does it take us to say that the School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh is committed to educational equity and justice 
And where does that take us when we say that the National Council of Teachers of English, our professional organization for English language arts and literacy studies is also committed to equity and justice in education. It takes us here. It takes us to a place where we can say we ignite learning because we value the lives of all people. We can say we ignite learning because we are always learning with each other because we have to maintain equitable standards and beliefs and dispositions that guide everything that we do from how we live to how we learn, from how we think in relation to other people, as well as how we exist in relation with other people. This is the work of equity. This is the work of justice and education. And this is the work that leads to our collective freedom. Because if you're not free, I'm not free. So how do we understand equity and justice in education? How do we commit to doing the work? And how do we ensure that children, young adults, adults, communities, and schools have access to the resources that will make them positioned to thrive, survive, and live the types of life that we know they and we should collectively live. So I end here. I end with the question about justice. The question is the question that frames the book that's coming out later this year that I am a co-author on and it's titled, Where is Justice? Engage Pedagogies in Schools and Communities. And that book that's coming out takes a really critical look at the work happening in schools and communities when we talk about educational equity for all, particularly for peoples of color in communities of color. So I wanna end here. I wanna end by saying commit to educational equity, understand the necessity of redistributing resources to the communities and the people who need us the most and determine ways for us to live with each other as we seek freedom and justice in this world. So once again, I am Valerie Kinlock, the Renee and Richard Goldman Dean of our School of Education at the University of Pittsburgh. And I hope that you will join me on this journey of working always for equity and justice in education. Thank you. <laughs>